You know, one of my favorite quotes is from a fellow who was very popular a couple of generations ago named Timothy Leary. And Timothy Leary once said that his favorite thing to say was, I don't know. Because every time he said, I don't know, somebody would try to teach him something. Well, welcome to another one of our vlogs from St. Uh, Mark's Episcopal in Dalton, Georgia. We welcome those joining us on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, we've been talking the last few weeks about the season of Pentecost and about the story of the Holy Spirit and also the beginning of the early church. And we're going to continue that today. Uh, we're going to join our story so much in the um, uh, end of the fourth chapter of Acts when the church is really doing very well. It's, uh, it's growing. It's got over 5,000 members now. People are very active. They're being baptized. They are uh, uh, sharing the uh, they're serving bread with one another, they're fellowship, they're praying, they're listening to the teachings of the apostles. And uh, they're doing something that's very extraordinary and that is a very communal group that's really, it's not been repeated much through history, but what they're doing, those who have land or those who have houses are selling those and giving all the proceeds to those who are in need. And what they do is they sell the uh, property or the house and they go and lay the proceeds at the feet of the apostles. And that is the ceremony of what they do. And we take up in um, the end of the fourth chapter, a fellow named Joseph, who is a Levite from Cyprus, does that. He lays his proceeds in the uh, feet of the apostles. And um, you know that's a very good part of the story. Well, it takes up in chapter five, the story of Ananias and uh, his wife, Sophia. And uh, it starts out with Ananias and Sophia kind of combined. They, uh, they sell some of the property they have but instead of giving all the proceeds to the church, they withhold part of it. But they go and Ananias goes and lays his proceeds at the feet of Peter and tells him that he sold it for this much and this is what he's given to the church. But he, he leaves out the part that he's holding back. Well, uh, when he says this, Peter kind of sees through that right off. And Peter makes a statement to him. He says uh, to Ananias, how is it that Satan has filled your heart that you lie to the Holy Spirit? You know, and, and Peter continues, he says, didn't the property belong to you before? Um, and wasn't the money that you, yours to uh, dispose of as you wish? He says, but you have lied not just to people, but to God. And when he says this, Ananias falls dead. And the people who are seeing this are uh, and greatly in fear because they see the power of what's happened. Well, a few hours later, not knowing this, but being part of the scheme is, is Sapphira uh, comes in and, um, and and she does the same thing, falls to the same trick. And Peter says to her, no, you've not uh, given all that you sold it for or you misstated what you sold it for. And he predicts her death. He says, they will carry you off as they did your husband. And she falls dead. And great is the fear of those in the church when they see these things happening. So um, now notice in the scripture that you know, Peter uh, admits that the land and the money, the proceeds from selling it was theirs. Do us as they please. The issue is they lie to the apostles. They lie to the leaders of the new church. And, and Peter says you lie to the Holy Spirit. Now, the Bible does not say that Peter killed them. It doesn't say that God killed them. You know, that's, uh, that's something for another lesson. We talk about God killing people on earth. But we are led to believe that both, um, both of them died because they lied to the Holy Spirit. Now, one of the things, the reason I gave that quote from um, Timothy Leary is one of the uh, things I really enjoy about teaching is when I'm challenged with a verse I don't fully understand that doesn't really fit in with my uh, wishes for the what the... the uh, gospel and what the Bible should be teaching us. So, and this is one of the examples of that. Now, this is sort of a strange story. So, um, you know, first of all, you know, it doesn't sound like uh, the movement that Jesus was trying to create. Jesus was trying to make people to follow him. And we have here we have a story of people being punished by death, you know, for lying or, or all that Jesus followers are living in fear because they feel they may be similarly punished. The second part of this that doesn't give me is that there's been lying before in the Bible without punishment by death. In the Old Testament, Jacob, you know, lied to get Esau's birthright. David lied a few times. 
In the New Testament, Peter himself lied to Jesus. He, you know, said, I will never betray you. He was very emphatic about that. Then later on, Peter lied to the people around the campfire saying, I don't even know this Jesus. Well, you know, and believe it or not, Jesus lies too. In the seventh chapter of John, Jesus tells his brothers that he will not be going to Jerusalem to participate in the Feast of the Tabernacles. Then after his brothers leave, Jesus sneaks off and goes to Jerusalem by himself. So, that, no, that's not true. Also, in all three synoptic Gospels, Jesus makes the statement that says, This generation will not pass until all these things, all the things he's uh, uh, prophesizing, have happened. Well, the, the generation did pass. Now, we could kind of uh, you know, work around that a little bit, say, well, it was a prophecy, whatever. But the bottom line is that it didn't happen that what Jesus said was going to happen. So what do we make of this story of Ananias and Free about you know, them dying with this? Well, let me suggest this. God inspired the Bible. I fully believe that. But God did not write the Bible. People did. Let me repeat that. God inspired the Bible, but people wrote the Bible. And Luke, the writer of the book of the Gospel of Luke and of Acts, was writing all the story of the beginning of the church, you know, a generation or so after this happened. Now, the church was having a very exciting beginning. A lot of things were going well, but the church was also under constant threat. You know, from the, the Jewish leaders, the uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees, also led Rome, they were threatened by Rome. But these were outside, you know, forces that were threatening the church. But Peter tells Ananias that Satan has taken over his heart. Now, this is the first mention in the Bible that Satan will try to destroy the church from within the church. And that's very big, so consider that. You know, Jesus forgave Peter for lying to him about denying him and then lying to the others, you know, uh, all that. But Peter does not forgive Ananias or, you know, his wife. You know, so um, you know, do Ananias and Sapphira deserve to die in this? I don't know. I don't know if they do or not. That's for uh, obviously others to decide. But um, I'll be glad to hear what any of our listeners and people watching this video who have opinions about that. So kind of let me know. Uh, but let me give you something to consider along this question about, you know, did they deserve to die? Well, the Bible is, like I said, I believe inspired by God. But there are many Christians who believe in the Bible that everything in the Bible, everything in the Bible, every rule, every story uh, has equal authority that every thou shalt not and every statement by Paul and everything in the Torah um, is uh, to be followed without question or analysis. Now, another way of considering the Bible is that through the lens of Jesus' ministry, through Jesus' teachings and stories, when Jesus as the Christ, and uh, we have to ask ourselves, what is Christ's central message? What does Christ want us to know about God and God's kingdom? Now, considering through the lens of Christ that maybe, maybe this is not a story about Ananias and Sophia. Maybe this is a story about Peter and the other apostles. Maybe this is a story about the early church. Maybe this is a story about the church today. So what does this story tell us about uh, the Peter and the apostles? What does this story tell us about the church, the church in the early days and the church now? I don't know. Tell me, let me know what you think. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.